Medics. What are some unusual facts about how the human body works? Story 1. Sleep tech here. I always thought it was cool that once you enter REM, your brain sends a signal to your spinal cord to paralyze you. This is why if a person is disturbed in the middle of REM, they can experience sleep paralysis. Their mind is awake but the body hasn't gotten the signal that their sleep cycle has ended, so they're not able to move. I have experienced this a few times. It's terrifying. I had it when I woke up from a dream that I was fighting a serial killer. When I woke up, I saw the serial killer in my room. He looked at me, pointedly looked at my sleeping roommate, then turned back to me and made a shushing motion as he sat down in her chair. He then disappeared, and I regained my ability to move. Story 2. Did you know you can slow your heart rate way down by taking a huge dump? Well, you can. Your autonomic nervous system is controlled by your vagus nerve. You know it as fight or flight. It's like the gas and the brakes. Well, you can stimulate the brakes when you get suddenly frightened or jump in cold water. Even having a full belly can stimulate it, which explains why you get tired after a huge meal. But it also gets stimulated when you bear down, like when you're struggling to poop. That's why if you have a bad ticker, it's possible to die on the crapper. We find a lot of people dead on the toilet. A lot. Story 3. Your muscles are so strong that if all of your muscles in a region were to fire at once, they could snap your bones and rip tendons from your muscles. Your body has a process in place to prevent this, called reciprocal inhibition of the Golgi tendon reflex. Essentially, it forces some muscles to relax when others fire. However, under stress, this inhibition can be deactivated. So when you hear stories about tiny little women lifting cars after their kids get trapped under them, yes, that's possible. While reciprocal inhibition is cool, it's not quite the mechanism that prevents the ripping of tendons and bones. An example of reciprocal inhibition is where you flex your bicep, your tricep relaxes to allow flexion to occur. One of the mechanisms that prevent your muscles and tendons from tearing is called the Golgi tendon organ. The GTO receptor senses tension on the muscle slash tendon, and if the tension is too strong, it causes the muscle to relax. Story 4. I have a couple, going to put them in layman's terms as best I can. Your pupils will constrict or dilate, not only in bright or dim lighting, but also when looking at objects close and far away. This is known as accommodation. Your pupils will constrict or dilate together even if one eye is in dim lighting and the other is in bright lighting. That is, if one eye is exposed to bright light, both eyes will constrict in response. Even though one eye is not exposed to said bright light, you can test this out by shining a torch on someone's eye, but shielding the other eye from the torch, you'll notice that both eyes will constrict. This is known as the consensual light reflex. It's one of the tests we do in the cranial nerve examination. This image demonstrates it well. It requires energy to relax a contracted skeletal muscle. No energy is needed to maintain contraction. This is the basis of rigor mortis. Story 5. Your body is really good at hiding tumors, or rather tumors are just really great at hiding themselves. This is mainly in part due to tumors just being a clumped mess of your own cells. Unfortunate accidents that are now destined to multiply for eternity until they devour their own host from within. What many of us don't realize is that most of the time, cancer is not detected easily on its own. Sure, there will be some people who may start noticing an abnormal lump in their neck and go to get it checked. But for every one person where cancer easily presents itself, there are nine where it is found incidentally via other means. A lady might not even know she has cancer until she gets out of bed one day and suddenly fractures her femur. When she goes to get it checked, she's told that she has metastatic ovarian cancer, which had spread to her bones and weakened them. Some cancers can hide for a very long time. This woman may not have gotten her cancer diagnosed, because her symptoms probably just would have been some nausea or fatigue. Despite that, for certain disease sites, i.e. prostate and breast, 
There is regular screening that can help detect cancer early on, but there will always be that one person whose life is literally destroyed overnight because the cancer spread to their spine and cord compression left them permanently paralyzed. Cancer truly is an enigma. Story 6. Nursing Student I've just learned this year even after working on hospital floors for years. We can infuse medication through your bones. It's called intraosseous infusion. They drill a hole into your bone, typically the tibia, with a special drill and bit. Then they use saline to move the marrow out of the way and create a pocket they can infuse medications into. Apparently, the drilling bit doesn't hurt too bad. The injection of saline and the infusion of medication apparently hurts like hell though. It's usually done in emergency situations when the patient is going to die and they can't get IV access. I feel like a lot of people outside of healthcare don't know this. I also think a lot of people in healthcare might not know this. Story 7. That max heart rate during exercise is a function of cellular biology. Unless you have other cardiac abnormalities, your ventricles, the pumping chambers that create a pulse, can't accept impulses beyond a certain range no matter how hard you work out. The connection between the atria, collecting chambers, and ventricles is primarily regulated by calcium moving across the cell membrane, not the sodium slash potassium pump. So unless you have a congenital defect of conduction or your ventricles are firing independently, which can soon become fatal, that max heart rate is pretty consistent. It's also true that the atrial rate is similarly limited. Story 8. There is not enough pressure produced from a pumping heart to bring the blood back to the heart once it has passed blood to tissues that need it. Your veins, the vessels that carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart, are filled with valves. You actually use your muscles to squeeze the blood up movement by movement. The valves ensure the blood doesn't go back down as you move. Also, not completely human, but an MRI imager actually uses magnets to align all of the hydrogen atoms in your body, mostly from water and fat, and from there uses fancy physics to get the image back. The magnet used in the clinic typically has three times higher magnetic force than a magnet that picks up cars at the salvage yard. Story 9. Med student here. Always thought that teratomas were very interesting although I'm generally not too sure how little known they are. Essentially, it's possible that females can grow things like hair, muscle, teeth, and bone in a little pouch. But here's the thing. The pouch is located right on the ovary. Growing teeth in the ovaries always thought it was a bit weird. You can even grow things like thyroid tissue or skin cancer inside of the teratoma. Anyway, they usually get removed without too much issue. But they're kind of gross. You can Google it if you're curious to see pictures. Story 10. In order to build a good immune system and be healthy for your lifetime, you need to get sick. You gotta play in the dirt, scrape and bruise yourself, eat undercooked food, get colds, flus, and stomach bugs, touch germy things, eat stuff off the floor, etc. Literally, every germ you come into contact with, your body fights, and it learns. It makes instructions for how to fight pathogens in the future. Our overly sanitary society is killing us. In less developed nations, they can drink the water and eat the food because they've developed immune systems to fight the pathogens. It's not that their water is stronger than first world nations. It's that our bodies are too weak because we're constantly cleaning ourselves, whipping germs away from things we touch, and avoiding illness. As a medic, I was sick quite a few times in my first years of work. Now I rarely, if ever, get sick. I've come in contact with so many different germs that my body knows how to adequately defend itself. If you want to live longer and healthier, get sick while you can when you're young. Forget all that crap that kills 99.9% .9 of germs because it's rendering your body's immune system useless. Our bodies are meant to adapt to change. Literally every stress on the body causes it to adapt and strengthen. Jarring movements strengthen your bones. Exhausting cardiovascular work strengthens your heart and increases lung efficiency. 
Lifting heavy weights makes your muscles stronger, and getting sick makes your immune system stronger? Honestly, I wish people knew this. It would greatly decrease the strain on public health systems. The media is fooling you by scaring you into thinking every germ is a death sentence. It's the complete opposite, so please allow yourself to get sick and let your body that's been evolving for 200, 300,000 years do its job. Story 11, Endoscopy Nurse Here Before a procedure, patients are refrained from having solid foods and no dairy in their tea slash coffee. The reason is that fats take a longer time to be processed by the body, needing to wait at least 6 to 8 hours if ingested to do a procedure than other foods. Might also be why people who are into keto do not feel hungry for most of the day. Also, it's evident to us when a patient has eaten fatty foods the day before a gastroscopy because the villi of the duodenum look like it's coated with white paint. Story 12 biomedical sciences undergraduate, but because the human body only needs one functional X chromosome, otherwise men wouldn't work, during embryonic development of female embryos, one of the X chromosomes in each cell is turned off at random and shrivels up into a thing called a bar body. It's called lionization of X inactivation, and it's the reason tortoiseshell slash calico cats have their coats in the orange bits the gene for black fur was turned off, so orange fur is expressed, and it's the reverse in areas with black fur. Story 13. 1. You have blind spots in your vision that you normally don't notice. That's because your brain picks up on stuff around the blind spots and previous visual information to synthesize an image. 2. There are actually multiple ways that our brain sees through the eyes. It's possible for some blind people, there are many different causes of blindness, to be aware of objects around them without any form of stimulation other than visual. Some blind people's brains also can tell when it's light or dark out, and their circadian rhythms sync up three. It's damn near impossible to keep your eyes entirely still. You will naturally slightly move them almost all the time. You may think you can, but probably aren't. Four. Your body is able to make neural decisions independent of the brain via interneurons. The most well commonly known is that test, when you don't have you sit down and hit your knee. That stretch nerve they stimulate connects to the spinal cord, but then connects right back down to your leg. This is in addition to it going to your brain, but that takes longer. I could probably go on for an hour about the nervous system, story 14. There are more bacteria in and on your body right now than there have ever been human beings. In fact, one of the most important organelles within the cell, the mitochondria, are thought to have once been bacteria-like, single-celled organisms that were taken into a eukaryotic cell. A large number of bacteria reside in the gut, particularly the colon. They consist of an assortment of different species living in their own complex ecosystem called the microbiome. A baby is not born with a microbiome, but develops one soon after birth. There is a lot of scientific research going into the microbiome and how it affects not only gut health, but also weight, mental health, cardiovascular risk, and even cancer risk, among other things. There are some foods that can influence the microbiome. These are foods that have active cultures within them. This basically means that there are microscopic organisms present in the food. Two of the most common include yogurt and kefir. It is often recommended to eat these when taking antibiotics. The reason is that antibiotics can kill gut bacteria indiscriminately, sparing more resistant bacteria that can multiply and cause problems. Some people take pills and supplements with supposedly healthy bacteria in hopes of rebalancing the microbiome of their gut in favor of more benign bacteria. These are called probiotics. There are many publications coming out about this. These are thought to be protective from certain gut infections, or at the very least felt not to be harmful. Despite this sentiment, we really don't know or understand the complete role that the gut microbiome has in human health. Story 15. 
The way our brains develop is first, we develop impulsive tendencies, want to do things, and then later, controlling tendencies develop on top of them to control our behavior. So the highest function of the brain is to control and curb the over-enthusiastic part to ensure that we are not impulsive when we don't have to. That's why young kids are naughty and learn behavioral control as they grow up. That's why alcohol makes people do brave, stupid stuff in small doses. The first effect is that it calms down the center, which has the inhibitory controls, and that's what makes us let go of our inhibitions. Think how many times you wanted a drink before doing something sexually adventurous. Further alcohol concentration makes you go from maybe try something new to hold my beer and watch me do this. Further. Alcohol just paralyzes your impulsive or enthusiastic part, and that's when you are drunk and falling over. Further, it kills, either due to acute alcohol intoxication or later on severe DTS. Story 16. Anxiety meds work in a really weird way. They act directly in the mesolimbic pathway, which is known as the reward pathway. Lots of dopamine in there, so it means pleasure, motivation, and reward stimuli makes you feel good. There's an inhibitory neurotransmitter called GABA that in this pathway is in charge of inhibiting the production of dopamine. Basically, what anxiety medications do is that they inhibit GABA, the inhibiting neurotransmitter, which means that dopamine is neither being produced in more or less quantity. It's just a normal amount that is not being inhibited by anything else. It's trippy how these things work. Story 17. I waited not much longer than a week. I severed all of the median nerve and 95% of the ulnar, and the tendons were pretty much severed completely. I had an excellent hand and wrist surgeon with Penn State Hershey. They were waiting for the swelling to go down, but also the nerves and other tendons were starting to retract up the arm. They would have liked to have waited longer, but they couldn't. OMG, when that nerve block wears off, I thought I felt pain before. That was nothing compared to what I was experiencing then, and I experienced childbirth three times, most of them with no or minimal pain relief, and this nerve pain still blew that out of the water. There was nothing that relieved it. They couldn't give me anything at first, because they needed for me to experience this pain, so I can report what was happening, and there was a possibility that I would not be able to use, or have feeling in my right hand. So... After doing a ridiculous amount of writing, nothing, and physical and occupational therapy, I now have full motility, limited sensations, and sometimes no feeling whatsoever, but sometimes that's a good thing also. The nerve issues are not as intense as what they were, what, 10 to 12 years ago? But they are definitely still there, and I do not forget about them. Sorry, this was so lengthy trying to give an accurate response to my experience. Story 18. Hyperventilating decreases your blood CO2. An increase in CO2 is what makes you need to breathe again after holding your breath. So if you hyperventilate, therefore increasing your oxygen intake and decreasing your CO2, you can hold your breath longer. It comes with responsibility though because your body won't give the signal of needing breath so it can actually be really dangerous. A while back at my school, there was a competitive swimmer who used this tactic, and it was well known that he could stay under the water for a long time. But because his brain didn't signal to him that he needed oxygen, he ended up losing consciousness under the water, and he drowned. Also, I honestly don't know why this happens, but if you can't touch your toes, spin around a few times and try again. I guarantee you'll be closer to your toes the second time around. I've been showing people that for six years, and it blows everyone's mind. Story 19. Not sure if it's a fact. Too lazy to look it up. There are many saying how adrenaline can unlock your muscles to full strength, but it also knocks your brain. Now generally we experience the passage of time like we normally do, but once your adrenal system kicks in, oh boy, time slows down. Basically, your brain hits overclock mode and is processing information at a massively increased rate. You experience this as time slowed down. Reactions improve, observation-slash-situational awareness improves, 
and decisions are taken in a split second as your brain fires on all cylinders. Source, my own experience having to race my car home at breakneck speeds, through traffic and red lights, to get to my wife who was panic-stricken thinking someone was breaking into the house. I was weaving through traffic at over 100 kilometers per hour over the speed limit, and time slowed down. I was moving in slow motion. I could see a gap, analyze the distance, decide to go for it, and pull it off without a scratch in a split second. I dodged an a-hole who came into the fast lane right as I approached by looking at the median, seeing no curb stone, and braking hard as I went half over the dirt top overtake him at 120, trusting that the traction control would do its thing. I practice testing my car's limits when safe to do so, so I know these limits when I need to push them in an emergency. Story 20. If you get an injury to a part of your body, but you don't kill all of the regenerative cells and leave a matrix intact, it will heal completely with no scarring. This isn't just for superficial cuts on your skin though. The liver can also regenerate, even if only 25% of it is left. If the regenerative cells are there and a matrix has been left, someone mentioned most serotonin is made in the gut. Did you know they've found that bacteria in the gut can sense the human hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine, and they also produce a molecule similar to them too, termed AI3. So there is communication between our bacteria and the human body. Story 21, taking an anti-inflammatory until the last pill will actually do its job. Most people tend to take them for about two weeks, feel some relief, then symptoms return. If you take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, Motrin for example, for the full 30 days, the affected area will actually have healed better and you'll be in less pain. The reason is because of the absorption process through which non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs work. It takes about 10-14 days of medications taken correctly for the therapeutic effects to really start. Many mistakenly stop taking the meds at this point because they feel fine or better. All this does is end the cycle early before suffering the same symptoms. Story 22. The development of your visual pathway in your brain requires stimulation from your vision. Thus, if one of your eyes doesn't get stimulated, the brain will eventually ignore the signal from that eye and you will be blind even though the eye can appear perfectly normal. This is reversible up until the age of around five and eventually becomes permanent if not treated. This is called amblyopia and can occur from being cross-eyed at birth, being born with a cataract, not being able to see up close with one eye, and many other reasons. I have this. They found out when I was four and had me wearing an eye patch, but it was unsuccessful, so I now wear glasses one with a nice thick lens so I can kind of see out of the eye, I can see but it's very blurry, and take some strain off my better eye. Kids called me Patchy, the pirate in kindergarten. Story 23. I'm glad this is a topic the human body is so interesting. Most people don't realize just how resilient the human body is. I will contribute something most people don't know or think about. If a blood vessel is blocked, say like in a stroke, your body tries its hardest to compensate for it. It will even branch vessels around the part that is circulating poorly, as in, it will force and grow around it to establish flow through the area. May not sound like much, but this always amazed me. Story 24. Our system of producing energy involves using oxygen in our cells to essentially break down the glucose we eat into water, carbon dioxide, and ATP, this is why we inhale oxygen in and exhale carbon dioxide out. The ATP is essentially the final result, which is the body's energy currency. Babies, however, have a certain type of fat called brown fat. In fact, this process is purposefully not inefficient, and a lot of energy produced is given off as heat instead of making ATP. This is super important because babies have a large surface area, body ratio, so they give off a lot of heat to the environment. Brown fat helps balance this problem and keeps them warm. Story 25. The coolest thing in med school I learned was about Eagle Syndrome. 
So you have these two pointy, bony spikes behind your jaw called your styloid processes. They are there as an anchor point for many ligaments, including some from your tongue. In some people, the styloid processes are too long, and it begins to compress on your carotid arteries leading up from your neck to your head. In most people, this just results in neck pain and headaches. But in a minority, these little stiletto knives can end up stabbing you in your carotids when turning your head, leading to you bleeding out and eventually dying.